Hi everyone and welcome to Pro Tools Answers, where three Pro Tools experts demonstrate and elaborate on your Pro Tools questions put to the community in Avid's official Facebook support forum. Answering your questions, as always, are Anders Motz at Tonkraftwerk in Austria. Hello, hello. And Andy Hagerman, Avid's training architect. Ooh, sounds fancier than it is. Well, you said it last week, so I thought I'll I'll take it, and I like yep. it. So you That's are my... now you are now the architect, and myself, Dave. Uh, we're hoping uh, that we're helping you understand and get the best out of Pro Tools. We're going to look at a question from Jake, and his question is this: Hi all. Specific questions for those using Acoustica Audio plugins with a VST wrapper. Since Acoustica Audio requires AAX files to be installed on the actual OS drive, I decided to use VST versions so that I can install them externally, and since they are very RAM heavy and eat up drive space. I've been using Meta plugin, but when I go to make changes in real time, it stops playback. It makes it hard to hear what I'm doing on the fly and wondering if patchwork maybe runs any better or if maybe it's just my system. I don't think we're necessarily going to answer a question specifically with Jake's uh, issue, but uh, we, do you guys had some opinions about rappers <laughs> and, and maybe the way that he's using plugins or the way maybe the way he, that he's thinking about uh, using VSTs over AEXs? Yeah, on both of those, I think. Um, there's, you know, just opinions, but there's, I think, first of all, um, you know, he says because he wants to store his plugins in some other place, that's a valid point, and I don't know what his system's all about, but plugin files themselves in Pro Tools, AAX files, are stored in the plugins folder in a specific location on your hard drive. And that generally doesn't present many problems because plugin files are very small and they don't cause any damage there. They belong there perfectly fine. And I wonder, this is just thinking out loud, but maybe he's thinking that he has to have his sound libraries. For some plugins that have sample libraries and libraries of other kinds of media that it draws on, you don't have to have that media in that plugins folder. Maybe that's what he's assuming, that all my plugins and all their stuff have to be in that plugins folder. That is not the case. In fact, I use my network drive for a lot of the media stuff because it's completely fine. So if you were thinking that you have to load all your media into the plugins folder, maybe that's what's causing your problem. I'd invite you to revisit that question. And maybe you, know, you put your media in, in an external drive, which is what a lot of folks do. And you keep your AX plugins in, uh, in that specific folder. Yeah, that's exactly what I do as well. I've got a virtual instruments drive with just my libraries for all of my native instruments, contact and uh, uh, UVI plugins and stuff like that. Uh, but the actual AX uh, re resides on the on the system drive. This is also quite a good idea if, if you're running old mechanical drives as well, because the, the typical narrative for running audio sessions from an internal drive is is don't do it, because the constant reading and writing, uh, especially with larger se as your sessions get larger and larger, it wears the hard drives out. And I don't know whether that's so much of a problem with SSD drives these days. Well, there's the that that's part of the reason why we don't recommend running your session from your internal drive. The other reason is that your internal drive is always working on stuff, system stuff. And and given that uh, a, a any hard drive has a limited amount of bandwidth, you know, the system stuff that it's working on is very important and crucial and you don't want to interrupt that and you also, you know, all that system stuff would steal from the bandwidth that you could use for other things. So it's it used to be that you want to preserve the life of your hard drive, but hard drives have frankly gotten so inexpensive and so you know, they, they, they live much longer than they used to live back in the day. So it's mostly a, a matter of bandwidth and processing management. Um, but, but you're right, Dave, that, you know, it's, it's, it's a good idea not to have your sessions or the sessions media running for your system drive if you can at all avoid it. Yeah, or your sample libraries as well. Um, I, I don't. I, I keep <laughs> separate drive for, for most things. I've got one for my virtual instruments. I've got one for my video files. And I usually then have a third one or actually my network attached storage for my sessions. So everything is spread out on, on multiple drives to maximize the bandwidth I get out of each drive. I, I would probably I would put in an argument that if you're only working on one computer if you're working on one computer and you only have one computer and maybe you you travel a lot and you like working on stuff when you're on the go it probably would help to have those sample libraries natively on the drive 
you probably won't be able to get away from that. You could also argue that you could just take a USB-C drive with you um, and have one specific USB-C drive that, that connects into your sample libraries. Uh, obviously, that needs to be connected before Pro Tools loads, otherwise the plugins are going to have some trouble. But I think bringing it back to the original post, um, it, it, there's little point in conflating the plugins and the sample libraries. Plugins on their own are just the, the, like the front end for the plugin. The associated assets can be connected uh, just with a file path. That's right. That's right. The other the other thing that he mentions in in his original post that struck out to me is is that I think he he pretty easily substitutes AAX for VST plugins. He's like, I don't want to use AAX, so I'm going to use VST. And and trust me, I've done actually a, a decent amount of research when I was writing the the Pro Tools 101 book. I had to kind of figure out, you know, what the big differences are. The biggest difference to me and to a lot of folks between the different plugin formats is of all of them, the only plugin format that must report its latency to the system and therefore can be compensated is AAX. And it's possible that that's the leading reason why Pro Tools is the choice of professionals is because every AAX plugin, the latency of that process is logged and managed and can be compensated for keeping your mix in better cohesion than you could ever do. VST plugins do not report their latency to the system. They never have, they never, well, I won't say they never will, but they don't. And so when you launch a plugin in a DAW with VST, that plugin's going to work as fast as it can. It's going to introduce latency, whatever it does, and the system really doesn't compensate for it the same way that Pro Tools does. Now, AU, for all practical intents and purposes, is a wrapped VST that's designed for use in logic. So AU and VST can be thought of as being the same thing, but with different uh, window dressing. So I'd urge you, you know, if you're if you're serious about mixing and serious about cohesion and all that stuff in your mixes in terms of phase and stuff like that, again, it's another strong argument for sticking with AAX plugins, in my view. I totally agree with you. And there are a couple of other advantages to sticking with the AAX uh, plugin format if they are available. The most obvious being the delay compensation issues that you might run into. But also, I mean, I really like the compression metering and also the EQ metering in Pro Tools. I, I think those are great features of Pro Tools. We've addressed the points of libraries. We've addressed the points of, you know, of, of which format might be best suited to mixing. But sometimes there just isn't an AAX plugin that you want. And and that's when wrappers start to come in. And and wrapping has wrapping has gotten a bad rap. <laughs> hmm. Um he was all, uh, he was up all night working on that one. I was I was <laughs> that's a good one. Um so so um <laughs> so wrappers in the day, I, I I'm I'm not casting intentional shade on anybody, but F expansion made a wrapper it did the job nominally, but in my system and in so many people's systems, it was not a reliable solution. These are in the early, early days of all this stuff. So it was clearly uh, an effect of the technology. The person who posted the question is talking about Blue Cat Audio. And that is a wrapper that really does a fine job. And, and in fact, the, the, the Patchwork plugin um, has a lot of great features beyond being able to launch those plugins. And I'm happy to show it to you if you want to see. Oh, yeah, rock Yeah, on. totally. So here I've got a session with a unnamed instrument track, and I want to put in an instrument that I really like. It's called Equator. It's a virtual instrument made by Roly, who makes the Seaboard Rise keyboard, which I have, and I love. It's fantastic. And Equator is, is one of my favorite virtual instrument plugins. However, it doesn't exist as an AX plugin. It just hasn't been made that way. So the only way that I can run it inside of Pro Tools is to wrap it. And I'll show you how you do it. It's very, very easy. On one of your inserts, I'm going to go to the other category. Or if you're showing your, your plugins by manufacturers, you can go to Blue Cat Audio. But in the other category as well, um, you can go to Patchwork. And it opens up this minimal little uh, GUI. And without putting anything in, let's take a look at what this plugin does. It has four slots that are processed in parallel going to different chains that you can activate and deactivate. 
people who want their effects chains, well, this is one way to do it. Now, the way that I do it in Pro Tools with AX plugins, I'd use uh, track presets, but this is another way that you could do this. This is one of the really nice things about patchwork in terms of design is you've got a lot of routing flexibility and multiple process flexibility in that single plugin. I'm just gonna use it for a wrapper. So I'm gonna use it at its most basic level. And I'm going to click on any one of these blocks. It really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna to go to the first and the pre, and you can see I can load a VST. I can load VST3s, I can load AUs. It also has some built-in plugins of its own, but I'm gonna to go to VST. I'll click this VST and it opens up my systems VST folder. And you'll see here that if I go to, where is it, Equator? There you are, boink. We, we could point out at this point that the, the, the plugins for the VSTs could literally exist anywhere. I could put those anywhere. I could put those on external drives if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter where they are. Now I'm, I'm good to go. Is this an AEX plugin? No. It's a VST plugin not reporting its latency running within an AAX host. The host reports its latency, but it doesn't know what the latency of the equator is. Andy, I've got a question for you, and you can probably answer this. Uh, how does it handle MIDI beat clock? Does it forward that into the plugin? Yes, it does. Let me just double check myself on that. So for those of you who don't know, a MIDI beat clock is used for like those sounds that stick with like the, the tempo of your song, that like a, a delay or, or something that is synchronized or a drum loop. And Anders, I can show this to you right now, just for folks that, that don't know how to set up MIDI beat clock. Here's my, my edit window. And if you go in Pro Tools into Setup, MIDI, and the second one down in that is MIDI B-Clock. And this is, again, this is tempo-based synchronization. So for things like arpeggiators and, uh, and, and drum machines and things, and all I have to do is bump and bump and we're done. Fantastic, great. Yep. Is this as far as we could go on this subject? So we've, we've covered a lot of ground. We did. In the last 20 minutes or so. So I, I hope that helps you guys understand uh, the differences between all of the different plugin formats and why wrapping may not necessarily be uh, the best way to go if you're just using regular plugins where there are AX versions available. Um, also hope that it's helped people understand that sample libraries and plugins are, although they work together, they are two separate things. You can have sample libraries, which are large <laughs> to say the least um on external hard drives if you need to and and i think you guys have put some uh, some good arguments forward as to why they should be um, if you got a lot out of this video, uh, hit the thumbs up icon. Uh, that really helps us uh, and helps spread the reach of the channel. Uh, if you could uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, uh, that would really help us too. Hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload our new videos and that helps you. And then if you head over to protoolsanswers.com, you can find out a little bit about what we're doing over there. Um, you can also subscribe to our own inner circle and uh, and help support Pro Tools Answers. We're a community funded channel and, uh, and your, your support uh, helps us to to keep going and there are some some tiers that are included um, and some benefits that are included in that as well including monthly masterclasses with the one and only Anders Motts and uh, usually Dave as well you usually pop on there as well <laughs> yes <laughs> thank god there's only one and only of those um, thank you very much to you Anders thank you Dave. and thank you to you Andy you bet. Thank you to you guys for watching. Uh, my name's Dave. This is Pro Tools Answers. We'll see you next time, and we're out. Mm -hmm.